Hey guys, this is uh, Joel with Swoon and Swagger, and today I'm going to be showing you a little bit of how I do my post-production workflow after I shoot. So um, this is not by any means uh, comprehensive. Um, it's just going to be like a quick tutorial in uh, what I do. And of course, as with any post-production, uh, this can be uh, done in a million ways to one. So there's really no one way to do it. Uh, the right way so I hope you can take a couple things away from this and be able to integrate it to your own first production um, workflow so um, I'm going to be using one of my past uh, portrait sessions uh, from last year um, what I normally do is um, it's part of my uh, post-production strategy is I upload all the photos to um, to Photo Mechanic and that's when I do all my my culling and my and my my tagging. So I'm just gonna show you guys. Uh, just I just picked like a, a bunch from my last photo and then um, um, and I use it as part of this uh, tutorial. So what we can do is um, pick this one and shoot. Have all my photos. Come on. Okay. Well, let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so this is a uh, photo mechanic uh, version six, which is the latest version. Um, I have been using uh, photo mechanic since like 2009, and so they are they are very much uh, essential to my. Uh, post production. Um, I bought this on my own. They did not sponsor this uh, video. Um, so I just picked a bunch uh, from my last shoot, and and these are all unedited. Now, of course, you can't ed ed edit anything from Photo Mechanic. All you can do is just call and tag or add keywords. And of course, um, Photo Mechanic is super fast in being able to uh, do all those aspects. And once I've uh, once I have chosen all my favorites or my keepers, then I move it to another folder. From there, I use Lightroom to do all my uh, post-production editing. So I have all them renamed, uh, picked all my favorite ones, and um, and this I shot in uh, raw format. Uh, and uh, however, in this video, we're not going to talk about raw versus JPEG. Uh, that's probably going to be another video. Um, but for now, I'm, I shoot everything in raw. Uh, so I have already exported all these photos to a separate folder. And so from now on, I'm going to launch um, Adobe Lightroom. And then uh, start a new catalog. So, And I have it here. I'm just going to put um, post-production training something like that okay. and I um, skip so you can actually do manage uh, catalogs two ways one is you can cre if you have like a photo mini sessions where you have tons and tons of families you can create one um, library and then manage all the different uh, families from one uh, library or you can create one library for each session so that's again that's totally up to you how you want to manage uh, those uh, different uh, libraries and each one has their own pros and cons but you know if you're a new photographer that's something you're just gonna have to find out for yourself you know if you want to do just one library and then manage all the family sessions or all the weddings uh, but that's up to you then again you know with um, with one library that's you know it's gonna grow so quickly so I do recommend optimizing the um, the library you know once in a while so there's this um, optimized I'm um, sorry catalog um, set of library and uh, there you can you know help to speed up the, the catalog if there's a lot of files in it especially if you're shooting in raw so for now I'm just gonna do a new catalog and then um, oh I actually have that already and then I do the import and then I go to that folder. 
These are all of my files. And then I have a preset. Um, this one is from um, Get Totally Rad Basics uh, or Get Totally Rad. Uh, I'll put the link on the description below. Um, this one was, I bought this myself also years back and they've been, um, I've been using them too just for like, you know, minor basic color correction, but you don't have to have it. Uh, so, but for the interest of this video, I'm just going to do um, none. So I'm just going to do all my editing and all my basic color corrections. So I put my metadata in there. Um, let me just show you a little quick what it is. Uh, it's just, you know, um, oh, it's not in here for some reason. It didn't check. But um, it's basically just adding your, you know, your, um, here it is. So your, we should add, change this to 2019, your copyright information, your contact, uh, who the creator, blah, blah, blah. So this is embedded in all the photos. And so when someone, you know, wants to read that photo, they can see all that embedded metadata uh, into each photo. So I'm just going to put my own and then you can put any keywords you want if you want. And it's good for like SEO, search engine. Also, again, it's also embedded into the each photo's uh, metadata. So um, I'm just going to put a mini session. So you can put as many keywords on there. Just make it relevant in there. And then I have a check mark. And I usually do a build preview and I hit import. Okay, so it's pretty quick because I only picked like seven photos. Normally, you know, each family session is about maybe 300, 400 photos, and then I cut it down from uh, Photo Mechanic. So this is just a quick one. Um, and again, uh, I shoot in RAW, so I have a lot of you know, room to be able to uh, manipulate the photo in, in a style, the, in the look, in the way I want it. Um, and again, you know, I was with any photographer, try to shoot in camera with, with the optimized settings or the best settings so that you, so your post processing is, you know, um, reduced to a minimum. So, you know, try to shoot in camera uh, with the best uh, camera setting. Um, so this one, um, still, as you can see, it's a little dark. Uh, I was using an off-camera flash, but I think I have my ISO too low, so it's said ISO 800, um, and so or maybe my aperture uh, is a little too uh, uh, in depth or is too um, deep, so that uh, there's not enough light hitting the sensor. So we can do, so you can still do some correction on here. Uh, I hit the letter D for develop. Uh, and then just try to, again, just try to increase the exposure a little bit, but not too much so you can, so you don't clip the highlights. And you can see from here, you know, if you're, if you're exceeding the, um, the highlights too much, and I can tell, and I can show you an example. I think I'll just turn on the, um, the, the red clipping. So you can see like that that's overexposed, the, the little areas right here. And, you know, you don't really need to have a sharp eye to be able to tell, like, if it's too, if it's, too, um, if it's uh, over clipping. So you don't want it to over overexpose and a little bit of contrast, you know, uh, and then I can tone down the, uh, all those uh, overexposed areas and just bring down the highlights a little bit. And again, this is the advantage for shooting raw um, because you have, you can change the, the um the the color cast or the um the white balance and you can there's so much more space in raw than it is in jpeg so um i do highly recommend shooting in in raw because there's so much um, room that you can you can manipulate the photo uh so and then i also maybe a little bit down you know um just just to make sure that you know i'm trying to be as accurate as possible what i'm really looking for is a skin tone um, you know, if they're like uh, medium complexion or white complexion or whatever that is, you want to make sure that, you know, it's as accurate as possible to the skin tone. So I can just look right here. And again, just try to bring down the highlights a little bit. I know there's some little overexposed here, some details that are lost due to overexposure, but you know, you can just bring it down a little bit like that and then maybe add a little bit of vibrance 
and then some clarity and it's still a little dark you know under um uh, under skin so again you know you want to look at the eyes also and and the skin so that to me that's the most important so i just you know uh, again i just try to bring back a little bit of the highlights or um use a little bit of the exposure just so they don't look that underexposed but again watch your highlights there okay i think it looks good you know uh, maybe a little bit more so then you can you can um, manipulate this you know to your heart's content and spend a whole day just editing this but again you know if you're a portrait especially if you're a wedding photographer or you're you're a volume shooter, you're managing tons and tons of photos, you know, you really just want to, you know, just touch on every image. Uh, and then, you know, if it's the same photo, if you're shooting a lot of the same set, then you can do like a batch processing, which I won't show in this one because I have different um, images, but uh, maybe later I'll show that too. But it's really easy. You can just use the, um, the batch tool. So... Again, I look for the sharpness in the eyes. You want to make sure the eyes are sharp, you know, and and I look also for the skin tone. So you want to make it as you know as accurate as possible. Um, this one maybe they're a little too red, so maybe maybe cool it down a little bit, but not too much, just enough, you know. There, I think it looks good. And if you want, you can also a little bit of vignetting, to you know just to darken the the corners, not too much. You know, um, here, you know, just a little light vignette. There. I think it looks good. And then now move on to the next image. Okay. This one is, oh, uh, yeah, so I lost all the highlights, so I can bring that down. There. I know this one's a little too reddish, too warm for my taste. So I can just like that there we go and introduce some you know deep in the black and then just in some of the DAs not too much don't go crazy in the in the control a little bit of vibrance I think it looks good and then, you know I lost some of the um some of her forehead on her left side so overexposed it so, there you go i think that's okay you just play around with it yeah i think it looks good you know you know you don't want it you don't want the the shadow side to be over it under it to be underexposed yeah and this one this one looks perfectly exposed um, you know but then you know you, again you can edit this you know to your heart's content sometimes you you know you have the tendency like oh I have to edit it because it's just me you know, even though the, the photo is like perfect perfectly exposed like this one um, but you you know you just have a tendency to you know to just edit it anyway because it's just uh, I have it so and that's kind of like me too like um I tend to like over edit everything so even though you sh really it's not necessary so this one's really perfectly exposed um the skin tone's good you know the skin tone um the overall photo you know there's it's not underexposed in anything um you know, always will look at the histogram uh, as a guide um, but so, you know, again, I just, maybe a little bit of, you know, uh, you don't want it to underexpose, but maybe darken a little bit some of the, uh, the shadows, there you go, but not too much. You don't want it to over-process, that's what you want. Okay, this one looks good too. If it's like the same set, you know, within the same location, uh, even though it's a different person or you move move the people around you can still use the same um, you can use the the batch tool or you can use the previous button which is the the edit that you use from the last photo so I'm gonna use that and then just compare a little bit before and after 
<coughs> All right. So let me lower down the contrast a little bit. I think that looks good. And yeah, I think it looks great. Move on to the next one. Okay. Yeah, this one is uh, <coughs> just a tad overexposed in some of the areas. So I'm just going to bring down, I'm going to regain some of that, that highlights. There we go. And again, you know, if you are a uh, try to nail the exposure in camera so that you don't you, so that um, you don't have to edit as much in <coughs> in post. So that's the goal. This one is uh, they're heavily backlit. So again, you have all these highlighted, you know, all these details that are lost, which is okay because. You know, you don't care about those areas. What you really care about is the subject. So they do have a little bit of lost detail on the hair. Um, so I'm just going to bring a little bit some of that down using the highlight tool. Maybe some of that. Well, I also use the white lever as well. And they're a little too warm. So I'm going to cool down the, cat, the color cast a little bit, but not too much. And they are, uh, they are underexposed. So because of the... Um, overexposed background so it's kind of making them a little underexposed so I'm just gonna um, raise the, the exposure a little bit like that okay and then maybe use some of the shadows and then you can maybe introduce a little bit of vignette <coughs> these are the the standard vignetting so I don't go crazy in vignettes, um, just a little bit, just a little subtle vignette on the corner so that the the viewer can focus their, you know, on the subject, not on the background. So again, you want to kind of zoom a little bit and make sure the skin tone is accurate. Um, so he's a little reddish and Maya, the girl, is, you know, it's a little warm skin tone. So... And again, this is the beauty of raw shooting in raw. You can like manipulate so much, and in JPEG, everything's locked in, like the white balance, sharpness, um, the you know the highlights. There's no you know there's very little room for high, highlight recovery, but for raw, there's like so much more you can recover from. So, and that's why I tend to shoot uh, a little overexposed, maybe half or one stop over. Because I know that um, I can always recover that in Lightroom. Um, because if you're shooting, you know, right on the zero or underexposed, you can introduce more noise by bringing up the exposure. So I'd rather, you know, just overshoot it a little bit and then just recover the details using the highlight tool. So that's just me. You know, again, um, uh, other photographers have different ways of shooting, but you know, personally, I. Um, being able to recover highlights is better than introducing noise. So, okay, there we go. Maybe, yeah, there we go. There we go. I think it looks good. No, just okay. I think it looks good, right? And now, okay, this one, she's a little, um, the white balance is a little too reddish, her temperature, so, or skin of her, her um, the color of her skin, so I am going to cool her down a little bit, that's good, and then maybe add a little bit of vibrance, see if you increase the vibrance, you can tell, like, you know, like there's the white of her eyes now blue, so, again, subtlety is the key word here. You don't want to go too crazy and put a little black in there you know get some separation from the back from the background um, there you go I think that was good right okay so yeah so this one Okay, this one, yeah, it's a little underexposed. So I'm gonna. There you go. Just. There. 
I think that one looks good. That one looks good too. For this one, we're gonna have to go to Photoshop and just um, layer out the um, part of our area. Uh, just add masking and then just um, uh, bring up the uh, <coughs> a brush tool and then just, you know, um, um, and then increase the, the exposure in some of the areas of our skin, of our uh, face. That one looks good, warm. This this one, her face. Again, the most important is her face. Um, you want to make sure that's sharp and perfectly exposed. So this one's maybe a little on under. So I'm just gonna let me increase it a little bit. There you go. Looks good. That one too. Maybe. A tad and okay and there you go I think that's perfectly well exposed look at that beautiful okay so that's pretty much it uh, I hope that you're able to get something out of this um, again I will be um, adding descriptions on what tools I've been using uh, and, um, and if you have any questions or comments, please leave it on the comments below. And uh, I'll be probably doing more of this um, and later down the line. But again, uh, thank you for for viewing this video. And if uh, please, if you can hit that uh, like on this video and then hit the subscribe button. And also, if you want to uh, be notified whenever a video is uploaded, just hit the, the bell and uh, you'll be notified whenever a video is uploaded. So again, thank you so much uh, for viewing this uh, video and I will see you soon.